Okay guys, so I got a Line 6 Helix LT recently and I've, I may have put a video up yet. I recorded footage on it, but it's like out of the box what to expect when you see it. So I've had it for two days at this point. Maybe just one, really. And it's it's a little intuitive. They say it's super intuitive, but it, there's a lot of stuff that I'm just figuring out that I think is beneficial to make a video on because it's stuff that I didn't understand and was very like, how do you do this? You know, because it's, it is intuitive, but it takes a while to understand how the, the flow, the workflow goes. So this video is going to be primarily some tips, some very beginner basic tips about the uh, Helix LT and um, suggestions. And uh, I'll show you how to kind of navigate and get started because I didn't know how to get started and actually make a tone or even to get there. I saw videos on like how to create a preset and those videos were helpful. They helped me, but I didn't know how to get to that point. Like I literally didn't know how to start from a blank from nowhere. Didn't understand it and none of the uh, booklet has helped so far and I, I can't stand reading all that crap. So I'm going to give you a quick and easy how to get started with your Helix LT. I want to say that um, it, it was a little more difficult than anticipated. All right, so the first tip, I recommend that you laminate that sheet that comes with your Helix LT or maybe even the regular Helix. It comes with this cool cheat sheet and I took mine, look at that, flipped it around. It's laminated on all the edges. I took mine to uh, FedEx, whatever your local FedEx place is. And it was four bucks to get that completely laminated because I might take that to a practice gig or I may take it to the even even the show uh, practice or the gig and people could be drinking set their cup on it and it'll have a ring on it your maybe your tables messy so laminate it save it because it's actually cool for the for the quick cheat sheets okay the second thing is I recommend put it on a table first I mean you might be tempted to put it on the ground and just start stomping on it but you're not going to understand stuff and and really it's going to be hard for you to get to the point where you can manipulate it and try to press the buttons and stuff because I found myself squatting down uncomfortably and I'm, I'm a big guy so it's like I'd, I'd recommend you put it on like a coffee table so this is just a normal knee level in front of your couch coffee table should be good enough for that okay for my first interaction with helix for my connection your guitar input's going to go into the second guitar in. That's obvious. Obviously, you're going to do that. But I chose the, instead of the line, the quarter line out, I chose the XLR out. You want to go left if you're if you're going to go just one line. If you're going to go stereo, go right. Um, but I have it going into my little mixer. It doesn't matter what mixer you have. But what you're going to want to do is the channel on the mixer, you're going to want to turn the gain all the way down. I have that gain all the way at zero. And then I have, you know, the EQ is flat. I have any type of modulation is all the way down. These are special effects. Uh, pan, I got it dead center. And then you set you know, on this mixer, that's Unity. So I have the channel on Unity. And when you want to start out with your main all the way down, over here on the Helix, you're going to want to turn your volume all the way to the top. Okay. So then this is coming out, this mixer. It's coming over to this powered, it's a Harbinger. And I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try to get it where the light's not blinding it there. But I have everything set to, uh, it's, it's set to line. It's plugged in the top. I have it backed out to line and not mic because mic's going to add decibels onto it. I've got the input gain on 50% for that plug. And I have, if you have any type of EQ, you want it to be a flat response. So however you can get that powered mixer to a flat response, if you have a powered mixer. Um, and then I have the master set to 50% right here. So it's just as flat as it can get. And that's a good starting point for that. My understanding, I haven't done it yet, but my understanding is that you could go directly from the out, the quarter inch out, and still have it set to line. You'd, I'll show you how to do that in a second. But have it set to line and go straight into your your amp and set your amp on the clean channel and also set your EQ kind of flat on the clean channel so that the Helix can do the processing of your EQ and your and your stuff and not your amp. You don't want that to interfere. I I, I don't think it's wise to like plug. It. That's if you're doing cab emulations. If you're just going to go pedals, 
different story. This video is not about that. I'm just trying to get you connected and you started. You could feasibly go straight into your powered mixer, uh, powered monitor, I'm sorry. A lot of people do that and not use the mixer at all. But I have a, um, other stuff that I do, like I have a friend come over who sings. So I had the mixer already set up, but you could eliminate the mixer in your signal completely. You could just go straight from the Helix to a pretty much flat response powered monitor, any powered monitor. Same thing, turn everything, your, your EQ all the way down flat and get your um, line set to about 50% on your its gain and then set your gain down on the powered monitor and go straight from the Helix in. You wanna turn the Helix's volume, the gain knob, the big volume knob all the way up and um, if it starts to, if it's really distorted, back that off to about a quarter. I find that I usually end up backing it off to 75% actually, and it sounds better that way. But experiment with it. In this example, I'm going through the mixer though. Okay, so right out of the box, you know, anybody who has a brain knows how to hook this stuff up and at least get it connected. Maybe you even use headphones for the first time, it doesn't matter. But the Helix, if you saw this in my prior video, when you first boot it up, it's gonna give you all the Helix and all of its firmware and stuff. But right off the bat, anybody knows to press the buttons and it goes between the banks and they're the presets that come from factory. But what took me about two days of messing around with was understanding how to get to a place where I could create a preset that had nothing in it. And that ain't easy right off the bat. So I'm going to show you basically save you the time and, and energy it takes to figure that out and get you to that spot a lot faster, hopefully. And maybe that'll help you get to the point where you can create. Okay. So I showed you it's on the table. It's already lined in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the main mix to 50%. It's 50% up there coming out to that powered. And this is all the way up. I'm going to go ahead and back it off a quarter, honestly, because that's where it's going to end up being. Power it on. This is the first thing you see. The lights kick in and Helix gives its firmware version. I'm at 2.30. I don't know if that's current or not, honestly. I've yet to connect the USB to the computer because you've got to download Helix uh, software for that, and I'm not there yet. This is very beginning. But this is what you're going to see. You're going to see the presets, okay? The first preset, obviously, if I press here, it's showing that. It's showing that that's the first preset. If I press this, it switches to the second. So anybody's going to figure that out. Very, very common. This one up in the upper corner means that it's the first snapshot within these presets, and I'm just beginning to understand snapshots, so this I'm not going to explain those or even go into it, because again, basic, basic, get started. Tap tempo, standard stuff. I'm going to actually set the guitar, uh, the camera up, and play a couple of tunes and just step through these. Um, I probably will just, I want you to see what it looks like from this top view. And I don't have like a, ha a hat camera or whatever. So I'm just going to put my guitar on and strum it. There won't be any actual playing. All right. So it's actually on preset two. I guess I pressed the B, but. See, by, by the way, you see that signal? It's just under red. It's under clipping. That's why I have this down to it. I actually probably need to pull that volume down a little more, but I'm not going to for this video. But anyway. Rectifier 1D that's going to be a lot more of a rock. Okay, so that, that stuff's kind of obvious. If you sat here and you just clicked, if you just stepped on these pedals, I don't know why this light's so terrible in here, but if you stepped on these pedals, watch what happens. It's just going to scroll through, you know, 2, B, C, D, and it'll keep going. You see the corresponding foot pedals lighten up as we do it. Now it's on 3A, 3B, 3C, 3D. It goes all the way up. I'm going to go backwards, actually, because it's easier to do that. It goes all the way up to 32, essentially. So there's eight banks of presets within uh, each of these blocks. It's, I guess it's really technically four Per, per number, so 31, 31, 31, 31, 32, 32, 32, obviously. So there's a ton to go through, and you can stomp through all those if you want. Um, if you press the view screen, it'll show you the signal path, so you can see how the um, signal's going. This one looks like, I'm not sure what this input is, but there's some type of input that splits off to a distortion pedal, 
It also goes to an amp, it goes from distortion back to amp. So anyways, uh, we'll, we'll go back to the beginning. There it is. The Everybody's going to see this one because it's the first one. Okay, so here's the part that is going to help you a lot. So if you want to create a tone and you want to get to a, start playing, okay, this is what you're going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get some light over here so it looks a little better. Okay, so I put a little light on there. It may be too much, but here's what you're going to do. If you press this button, this button gives you the big overall view of what you're in. And if you'll notice the name, I'm going to go back. You see how that's called double NRM? I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to try to get this video better. All right, so double NRM, SXA30, Plexi Jump, right? So if I go into this preset, factory one is what's selected. There's XS A30, Plexi Jump, Cali Rectifier. That's the same exact thing that we're seeing here. So that is in factory one. Then there's a hole. You can scroll down through every one of these, by the way. You can take this knob here, the joystick, and you can scroll down through all these. And as I'm scrolling, if I had the guitar on and, and the volume turned up, I, it would change at every single turn. Okay, so you can kind of check them out and see if you like them or whatever. You press this joystick back to the left, and now it's back to factory one or factory two. If I press in, it's gonna give me all the, and these are names, I've not tried any of these by the way, I just figured this out yesterday. So there's a, a lot of uh, preset names that I believe correspond to famous songs. Um, Let's look here. Beat it. Michael Jackson, I'm sure. You know, so some of them uh, unchained jumped. I'm sure that's uh, Van Halen tone. So I'm going to come back and try those actually. But here's what I did. I'm going to push over again and it took me back to this field and I'm going to pull down to user one. That's where I decided to create some tones. So I created a tone called hard rock and a tone called clean. And I'm going to create one called uh, soft rock and I, I guess country, whatever it is that you need, you can create that there. So within Hard Rock, I'm gonna actually go down and uh, log into this one. Here's the preset. I only have, in this block, I only have two tones created, okay? So if I step on this pedal, it's Hard Rock. Can you see that? Let's get down here. Yeah, and if I step on this pedal, it's clean. There it is, goes into the clean, goes into the Hard Rock. If I press this view, you can see the path that I've created. And I, I can tell you what mine is. The first thing is a um, noise gate. That first block is a noise gate. The second block that's right here is a distortion pedal. All right, so it's still in preset mode. I was going to engage the pedal, but it didn't work. So let's go back. Here we go. So there's distortion pedal. It's off. There is um, equalizer. I think I'm boosting mids for that in case I have a solo. There's my amp and cab combo that I put down there because I'm, I don't, I'm not good enough to like throw an amp down and then m mix it up with cabs. You can do that if you're, if you're awesome with it, but I'm not there yet. Then I have a delay, a reverb, and then it comes over to um, a modulation. So this, I think that's flange for like ain't talking about love and stuff like that. But anyways, I created this and then I created, if I press this, this clean channel. I liked this amp, which this amp is the Jazz Rivet 120. And then all I put past it was a chorus and a delay. And that's it. I, I did tweak a little bit of the, um, the front amp adjustments. But for the most part, I left them preset. So that's, that's how I created it. Um, I, I recommend, so if I, wanted to, if I wanted to do a new one, basically, I would hit the same preset it takes me back to this and now I can scroll down through to new preset which is going to be 1c and if I press this button now it's a blank empty preset chain okay so you can like right now let's say the first thing you wanted to do now that it's at blank preset let's say that we want to lay an amp down right so if I move the joy I'm gonna move the joystick over I can roll it and it just rolls through stuff. And I don't want to do that because I haven't d d decided any spot yet. So I'm going to go right in the middle. It's kind of, kind of a good spot. I'm going to press this in. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to amp and cab. Okay? So I don't play bass. I play guitar. 
some oppressed guitar. A good starting point for if, if it's rock, I don't know what your what yours is, but a good starting point is like a, a plexi. So I'm scrolling through, you can see all these amp and cab models that it has kind of built in here. There's a Brit Plexi uh, jump. I like I like jump actually. So I would just press and there's the amp cab simulator already there with speakers. You can go in and tweak the speakers if you want. Um, that probably a little more complex. I'm trying to be as basic as possible here. So now let's say that before your amp you wanted to throw in a distortion pedal, okay? Some people like the compressor before, so let's let's put a compressor in actually. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the chain, and I'm going to go to dynamics, and I'm going to choose a mono dynamic, which is a, maybe a, a studio compressor. I'm just going to leave it right there. I'm not even going to mess with it. Let's go over here and let's let's hit a, a distortion pedal. So there's distortion, mono. I'm just choosing mono for now. If you're going to go out. If this is left and right, then choose stereo and create stereo for all, by all means, but I'm, I'm mono most of the time, so it's not really applicable. I'm gonna go down to Minotaur. I don't know what that emulates, but I, there it is. And it actually gives you, I can add the gain, I can I can gain it off. Let me just, let me just turn it down, 3.0, okay. And then I'm gonna move over, and let's say that, um, I don't know, let's just go past. I like reverb and I like um, delay. So I'm going to click. I'm going to come down to delay first. It gives those familiar little icons that you'll get used to. You can change them. You can change the colors too, but I don't recommend it because this is pretty much the, the standard. Let's go with a simple delay. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to click and I'm going to go down to a reverb. And it's it doesn't give you the option. I guess, I guess you'd, you can't choose, but... Let's go down to uh, spring, 63 spring. All right, so this sound here has not been saved, but I'm if I wanted to save it, let's say that you played it. I've got my guitar over here, and you're strumming through, and you like it. If you like it, and it's in 1C, by the way, which will be 1 ABC, it's not there yet. But if I wanted to save it, I press this save button, and it's going to let me call it something. And since I'm doing this this video, I'm just scrolling. I'm gonna call it um, demo. So D E, and I'm moving over. It's very intuitive. Come down to dim back scroll to the small letters. Demo. I find this a lot easier than because you can scroll fast, and I don't like that. So I'm gonna put demo preset, and I'm going to see the big green save underneath this but over this uh, knob I'm gonna press that and it's saved I'm actually going to set my camera up and just show you what this sounds like right out of the box all right it didn't have any um it didn't have much volume because I turned that down I'm gonna go ahead and... got all those effects all of those effects are in there with it right now and let's say that you wanted to turn an effect off because obviously it's running the compressor the distortion pedal then the cab and then delay and then reverb but let's say I wanted like the, the delays a little much it sounds like it's really penetrating quite a bit let's say I wanted to turn it off I'll show you how you can do that quickly and easily okay so I'm sitting I'm standing here with my guitar on and I'm just got it ready to go. Crank it up. See the path? There's the path. Compressor, distortion, guitar and amp, delay, reverb. Let's say I needed the um, the delay off, right? Turn, gotta turn that down. What I'm gonna do, this this is one way to do it. This isn't the way that I prefer, but I'm gonna show you. In this view. You can highlight the joystick over the delay. If you see these bottom knobs, by the way, I can adjust 
the um, timing on it. I can adjust the feedback mix. All these parameters I could adjust. I'm not going to mess with it. I just want to turn it off. So in this mode, in this view, I'm just going to press this bypass button. And now if you'll notice that icon went dim. Okay. So now if I turn the volume back up, there's no, there's no delay. There's a little reverb, right? No delay. You can hear the, listen to the reverb. So now if I wanted to turn reverb off, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move the joystick over to the reverb block. Now you can see that it's highlighting the reverb. It gives you all the parameters for reverb. If I press bypass, it turns it right off, right? So now I'm going to turn this back up and let you hear that. No reverb. Let me turn that distortion pedal off and do the same thing. All right. It's kind of hard to do. I need a head cam. So distortion bypass. No distortion. Here's how it does sound. Well, no, extra, not a pedal. Still has distortion, but it doesn't have the overdrive. Okay, so now I'm actually going to show you how to assign those to switches. All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to assign these effects to switches. So instead of pre pressing the bypass button to turn them on and off, I want them to be switchable by foot. Obviously, I'm not going to reach over while I'm playing at, at a gig or practice or whatever. So I, act, I have the volume on my guitar that's hanging over there uh, all the way up, and I have the output on the Helix all the way down. So if I turn it up, it's, it's running. I don't know if you can hear it, but it, it is running. Um, if I turn on, I'm going to go ahead and assign a, a pedal. I'm going to leave the, the compression on, but I'm going to assign a pedal to the distortion. It's already highlighted. You see how it says Minotaur? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and touch, since it's the first dynamic that I want to be able to turn on and off. Actually, it's the second. Let, let's assume that this is something you want to turn on and off. I would assign that to the first one on top because it's kind of, that's where it shows the line is there. I don't have any on the bottom yet. So I'm going to go to the second slot. I want to assign this to the second switch, essentially. I'm just going to hold the side of the switch. The top, it doesn't matter. They're both the same. And I'm going to hold it. Now you can see that this changed. And it says assign the foot switch to bypass selected block. Yes or no, you have a certain amount of time. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to say yes this time. So I'm going to hit touch. And then I'm going to hit this OK. And I've assigned bypass to it. Now this thing is illuminated. Uh, orange is this color, I believe. Let's get the delay. Let's go over to the delay. Highlight it. Now let's touch here. Just barely touch. I'm not pressing. There it goes. Press OK. And now it's assigned here and it has green for delay. Green's the kind of line six color delay. I'll do the same thing with reverb. So I'm going to highlight reverb. I'm going to touch this. And there it goes. I'm going to hit OK. And now it's assigned to that as well. If from this view, if I press the view button it kind of shows me i don't know if you let me let me get this in here now you can see it says it, it says minotaur simple delay 63 spring i can go back to this view and i'm still kind of in stomp button mode and i'll show you i'm going to turn them off they're all bypassed now i'm going to turn the amp back up my guitar is back up if i engage hey see it's my voice is actually being picked up if I engage the distortion pedal, the overdrive pedal, really kicks it in, right? Really kicks it in. The delay. Hey! Kick in the reverb. Kick in distortion. That's that delay doing that. I bypass delay, I bypass reverb. I turn it down a little bit. Now I can. bypass it it thinks I'm trying to reassign it actually because it's still highlighted on this chain if I touched down here it thinks I want to reassign it there so that won't happen unless skin actually touches this so unless you play barefoot after you've set them it won't do it anyways I honestly like it's in the 1c demo preset I honestly like the stomp box view 
from stomp box view I can come down here off of these two channels if I press down it's going to go to 1B which is my clean channel and I see stomp box view I see my pedals if I come down one more there's my hard rock that I created it's got the screamer it's got delay EQ plate and flanger so I like that this is my favorite mode to have right here because I see which pedals are on which are off I'm turning all that off on however you save it like for example if I come in here and save it with let's say that I want always distortion on which I don't always all of them on let's say I wanted everything on you see how they're all illuminated if I come up here and save and just press save over the preset already every time I come to this channel now it will start with all of those on so if I I can turn it off actually I'll just turn it off give it a second I'll turn it right back on kicking in it'll go straight to that preset and exactly the same pedals that I saved it in will be there I'll show you the, the demo preset what happened to it too because it should have saved I don't know if I saved after I assigned the foot switches but anyways here it is preset one they're all on if I advance up preset two is my clean with the pedals that I do want to be on whenever I switch to that channel and three yeah I did I hadn't assigned and saved those yet so if I go back to this view they're all on I do want to assign them to a spot though let's highlight go over and highlight that distortion I want to assign it here I say okay I want to go to delay I want to assign it here I say okay I go to reverb I want to assign it here I say okay now if I hit save do I want those all on it doesn't matter this is demo save save now it'll remember those pedal assignments every time. So now I can come down back to clean. There's clean, there's my pedal assignments. There's hard rock, there's my pedal assignments. As simple as that. I don't, when I go into this hard rock channel, I don't want it to be automatically on overdrive. I, I don't want that. So I'm actually going to turn that off. I don't want the delay on already. Um, that's compressor. I do want the compressor on. And reverb on I want those on definitely not flange so these two I want on every time I go to the channel this is noise gate which I always want on I don't have it represented in bypass because I never want it bypassed but I do want those on every time I come to the channel so therefore now that I've done that I'm just gonna save and hit save and there it is so again, I, I know that that's, none of that is a super advanced. It's just very basic. That's the level of my understanding with the Helix right now. This is, the uh, again, the LT. I am overall happy with it. I, I've always been a, a physical amp. I'm, I'm not the guy that's ever liked uh, modeling or any of that. I actually had the Helix Firehawk. My first impression of it was that it was... Um, I didn't like it. I didn't like the sounds. I like this sound that I'm getting that I created. Some of the presets I like too. I'm going to play with the presets tonight. Um, and I'm going to learn. I haven't learned how to do this yet, but I'm going to download other people's presets and I'm going to maybe purchase a few IRs um, and see how they sound. I'm, I'm learning about those as well. So once I figure out I have an aha moment like I did with this to get into a, a blank preset and create one. I'll post a video about that because I don't think that there's enough videos that explain from a complete moron, for lack of better words. I'm, I'm an absolute baby when it comes to this. And, and I figured that out, and it's actually not that hard to use. Um, I'll post more videos as I, as I figure those things out. So I, I don't know if you enjoy yours or you're thinking about getting it. I think it's a good investment. I have multiple gigs, multiple bands that I do. And rather than haul, look at this equipment, man. I'll flip this around. I've got processors, amps, cabinets. You know, I have a valve amp over there. Rather than always pack that up and take it, if all I have to take is this Helix and get a good sound, a workable sound every time, 
that's invaluable for me. So, so far I'm liking it. Have a good one. Rock on. Hmm.